you just close your eyes and listen to it. And if it takes you deeply into it and you start getting lost listening to it, that's quality. That's what music is. It's a labor of love. You know, quality in through a quality device, you can't help but get quality out. Yeah, me? I got it. Good. All right, so I'm going to set this one. I'm going to zoom out. All right, so I'm gonna do my best to follow you anyway. I'm gonna make sure your mics are still recording. Can I say one, two, three, four, five? Can you hear me? Yep. All right. All right, this is gonna work. Okay. Okay. Far away. Wasting bits. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Burning tape. So who are you? That's my favorite, I'm, famous first question. I'm John Now, and I manage Neil's studio and engineer for him. Neil, um, Neil, Neil Young. Young. Um, this is his home studio. It might as well be his living room. That's how we treat it. Um, and then I'm, in, I'm working on his archives and also basically do all of the analog to digital transformation. Occasionally I get to work in here and mix something too. Uh, well this room is pretty, pretty special to us because uh, Rocky uh, worked on this room. Yeah, I know. He was 12 years old with his dad. His dad built yeah. a, a studio here. So. Yeah. Well, first of all, the reason I'm I'm really excited about being here is uh, Neil was on stage at the Fortune Conference and was really right. asking the uh, computer industry to ship better D-Day converters inside your computers and inside right. your, uh, yeah. your uh, CD yeah. players. Or, or, or your iPod. Or your iPod. You right? know, why why listen to, you know, you don't have to listen to MP3s in your iPod. You can listen to 192, 24-bit. High resolution stuff. And so you're already using a language that I'm sure uh, audio geeks all understand, but <laughs> normal people out there. Well, you know, I, a CD is like 44.1 kilohertz right. and 16 bits. And what we're doing is uh, upwards of, of 192 kilohertz, um, you know, essentially over four times that. And then the, 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 the bit depth is enormous going from 16 bits to 24 bits. It's just, you know, somebody smarter than me can tell you what the number is, but it's, uh, from a listening standpoint, it's it's uh, phenomenal, just even going to 24 bit. Yeah. So our philosophy here has been, and Neil, you know, Neil was a very early proponent of digital. Um, in 83, when I worked for him earlier, we, we still have the machines. Uh, and you get a lot of flexibility with digital because you can manipulate it quite easily. Even you know the machines from 25 years ago were, were uh, uh, allowed us to do a lot of things easily that normally we would do with a, a razor blade and splicing tape, you know, on on these tapes. Yeah. Um, but at some point he just he, he went you know, and I think that emotionally it affected his his own response to making music. You know, I think that he really, I mean, you know, he's always gung-ho, but I think that it just, he was dissatisfied. The end result did not sound, did not move him emotionally the way that it used to. And, and one of the things that we found very early on in, in all of our testing with the analog to digital converters was that there was an emotional connection. And the closer you were to the analog, the, the, the more natural it felt. And quite often we would listen to converters, uh, not just, you know, A, B, you know, oh, listen to this one, listen to this one, but we'd listen for 15 or 20 minutes, you know, to, to see how it felt. And it literally, the bad converters were tiring to listen to. You literally would, would do it. We had this one, uh, this one great shootout uh, and actually, Neil was there. Neil played, uh, brought in acoustic guitar, and we recorded live uh, in in this this guy's office. And we went through a couple different converters, and we were and then we were listening back to tapes through different converters. And it was really funny because nobody nobody really knew which one was which. It was pretty much a blind test. And it was all music we were familiar with, you know. It was, tapes from Harvest album, tapes from this and that. And it, it suddenly struck me, 
that when we were listening through the converters that we use, that we've been using since that day, everybody, everybody's attention was right there. They were listening to, they were fully into the music. And whenever we would listen to the other converters, people would get up, they'd go to the bathroom, they'd start having a side conversation with the guy next to them. <laughs> and it, after like three or four songs, it was like, well, this is, you know, you can't ignore this, you know. And it, when, one day when we were in the first room, in the mix room, we took two of our processors. We set one up for 176.24. We set the other one up for 192.24. So this is a long ways away from what an MP3 is. Yeah. And played the same music through them and switched between them. And everybody picked the 192 as sounding a little louder and a little fuller. And that's the difference between 176 and 192 at 24 bits. So by the time you get that down to even a CD at 16 bits at 44.1 or in the case of an MP3 where you're, where you're scrunching it down even more, throwing out information left and right. You know, it, it becomes that much flatter, uh, it loses its depth, its clarity, it loses the, the sense of, of, of realness, yeah. where it sounds, you know, the idea of recording music is that it sounds like music. We're only listening to two channel right now, right? This is two Stereo. channels, yes. And it's it sounds like surround sound because the, the depth is just so rich. Yes, and that's what you lose both with bad converters and by squashing it down. You lose the nuances and the details. So particularly like, this is at Massey Hall from 1972. Wow. You can hear how deep the hall is, you know, and the yeah. more you scrunch it down, the less you hear that kind of detail. Now, if I was to bring a hard drive in here and steal this music, <laughs> could I play it back on my home computer or could I play it back on, uh, on anything I have or would I have I mean, you're playing it on a Mac, right? I'm playing so, it on a Mac. Now, do you have special hardware in here to play this? Yes. Special hardware. I mean, you can. You don't necessarily need special hardware, but you you do have to have a, 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 a digital to analog converter of some sort. Yeah. And in the case of playing it off a Mac, you have to have a program that's going to play it. You actually can take a 192 file. You can take a 192 24-bit file drag it into iTunes, or drag it into, um, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the, uh, the video player. It'll play it. Yeah. You know, it'll play it back. As long as you, you know, in the case of a normal Mac, it's going to downsample it to 44.1 or 48K. And that's what he was talking about on stage, right. was that you don't have the right DNA, DNA yeah, converter. Exactly. So do you have a special card that goes in your Mac to play this music? Um, you can. Back at the you, there's different ways of doing it. Okay. In this case, uh, this particular system, yes, does have a card okay. to handle a lot of the processing. Um, and with any Mac. To, to be able to, or, or PC for that matter, you have to have some sort of a card to get 192 or 176 high resolution out of it because they're limited to 44 and 48K. Yeah. You know, even if you put uh, a DVD, uh, you know, this, this particular thing that I'm playing, you can, you can buy a DVD of it. Yeah. Uh, that you can play back at 9624 at home. Yeah. On your regular DVD player. If you throw it into your Mac without something special, you're only going to get 48 because the Mac's going to down it. Got it. So that's and that's what Neil Neil wants a better DNA yeah. converter so that he can yes. sell you this song without downsampling. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so we're here at the Consumer Electronics Show 2015 with the famous Neil Young. A great thrill to, and for me to be here with you. Thank you. And uh, four years ago, you started talking about how music is uh, being degraded by the industry and uh, how it's being compressed and how it's being, uh, uh, all the emotions being removed from music. And, and now you have the Pono player. So congrats on shipping a product. Thank which you is very much. We've shipped about 20,000 of them so far, and we've got thousands of orders, so we're looking pretty good. Yeah. What makes this different? Because uh, I know what it makes it different. It, but sounds, it sounds great. It sounds like music. We had, uh, you know, a, an audio genius uh, build the insides, design these. 
uh, Charlie Hansen at Air Acoustics, and and uh, he helped us with it. And we spent years trying to make this. We tried a lot of different companies. We finally came along, and and Charlie was uh, Charlie was great, and uh, we built the machine, and it sounds great. And during all of this time, we we worked with the record companies, getting them to understand what we were trying to do. That that uh, we just wanted to have access to everything that they had. And uh, we convinced them that it was a good idea. And, of course, they love music, too, you know. That's why they're here. They want everybody to hear the music. And, and it's, a, it's time for that. It's the 21st century, and quality has been going down for the listener for a long time. And that, it's a huge opportunity for us to improve. So. We don't even know what we've given up in terms of quality until we get a product like this and can compare an iPhone with Spotify to the to the Pono with flak files, you know, yeah. that are done right with good same headphones. I mean, I, I put my uh, headphones on an iPhone and give it to new people who are uh, trying to hear the difference, and every single one can hear a difference. That's good because some people say, "Well, how, what makes you sure people can hear the difference?" And I say, "Well, I'm not sure, but I think everybody who listens to it is pretty sure." So I can't judge what people are going to do, but I know that everybody who I see who listens to it gets it. Whether they're young, whether they're old, whatever they are, they, they can feel it. It's not like you identify the difference. It's not like a stress test to, oh, do I know high res? Oh, I know what, what frequency this is. It's not like that. You just close your eyes and listen to it. And if it takes you deeply into it and you start getting lost listening to it, that's quality. That's what music is. But, but to escape. And where I go is this is competing with the iPhone or an Android phone because it's competing with convenience. And the iPhone is still more convenient. When, you know, I can get a, a song. If you tell me a new artist, I probably can put him up on Spotify and get him playing, right? You can recognize it immediately as being the artist that you heard, that you wanted. Yeah. But that's, the, that's when the experience ends. You recognized it. There, so You didn't feel it. You didn't get all the way into it like you would with a device like this. So. It, it makes a dramatic difference. Now, it, let's take it uh, step by step. The file formats here are called FLAC file formats. Yeah, I, I mean, they're, uh, I don't even know that much about that kind of stuff, that they are FLAC file formats, and, but it makes no difference. What they are is different resolutions of digital. Some of the files are at the lower end, like s similar to a CD recording, and some of them are through the, through the roof in quality. But this little guy plays them all back and takes special care of every one to make sure every one gets its best chance to be heard. And that's what this thing does, and we just feed it whatever we can get. The best food we can give it, and it just gives it right back to us. So that's quality in through a quality device. You can't help but get quality out. It makes a, a big difference. Um, where do you think this is going now? I mean, you've been talking about this for four years. Where, where, what's next for Pono? Well, now, now what the Pono player is going to do is it's going to introduce itself to everyone and say, here I am, you can have me. And it's manufacturers, everybody. We're putting out, a, putting out roadmaps of how to build Pono players. We're putting out all of the inside specs. We're not hiding anything. We're saying, if you can build it, Bring it to us, and if you built it right and we recognize that it was built right by these specs and we say it's Pono, we'll certify you. And if you, and if you want to use our brand, we'll license you. Now, you record on uh, this 2-inch audio, uh, analog tape. Sometimes. Cause Sometimes I use 2-inch audio 8-track, 2-inch analog 8-track. Sometimes I use it. I have a couple of heads for some Studer machines. By the way, Harmon is a Studer Studer is a Harman company. We're here in the Harman booth. There's yeah, a, yeah. a big so booth it's there. it's yeah. So they 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 acquired it, but um, uh, that's what I I have used on a few albums. How close does this get to uh, that experience of listening to your original master tapes in, in a, a studio with your Tannoy monitors? Well, it's very close. It's very close. Uh, we have a lot of people, and I wouldn't say this, but a lot of people on our community. By the way, we have this sales split, uh, this store where you can buy songs. It has a community, so people all talk to each other about what they're buying and selling, which is something no other company has. So we have in, em, embraced the community 
of music listeners into our site and told them this is your home, this is where you come to listen. And, uh, you know, it's made it really good for people. So what? I can't even remember what I was talking about. <laughs> what kind of music? What, what what kind of music uh, shows this off uh, when we get our Pono home? What what what, sh- what should be uh, two or three songs that we should really load up? You loaded mine up with, with a few classics, so thank you very much. Led yeah. Zeppelin was there, yeah. and uh, Lenny Kravitz, and uh, all sorts Good. of fun stuff. I don't know. Um, you know, I'm listening to uh, right now. I listen to Jimmy Reed. I got three Jimmy Reed albums on my player, which I think is right right here. I got uh, there's Rockin' with Reed, and uh, you know I love these I love these albums they're fantastic. Uh, now, now your, yours is a different color. How many different colors is well, this? Is a this is a limited edition player Kenny Rogers limited edition and uh, and uh, does it have the Gambler on there? Uh, it it doesn't have the Gambler. <laughs> on there. It might. Wait a minute. Maybe it does. You put Gambler on mine. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what was on there? Yeah. Good. Okay, that's good stuff. Uh, where is this? It's uh, really interesting hearing legendary performances like the like the Gambler because you hear them you hear a new them. way. Yeah, you hear them great, yeah. and and even those kind of performances, those old records, we're constantly trying to go back. If all we have is a forty-four one and it sounds to us like it was off an EQ tape copy, that'll be on our target list. We'll see how the uh, we see how. How the uh, top 500 songs of all time, we have the list of the most popular music of all time. And we go to that list, and if we don't have it, or if we have it, we check and see what where is it at. This is one of the most 500 popular songs of all time. We should have this at 192. You know, so we start looking for it, and that's what we look for, the things. And then and then uh, if, we, if it ends up that's on an album, we get the whole album. If it's only a single, we take the single, whatever it is, and we start building and searching, and and it's a long process. It's a labor of love. You know, I, uh, your guys on the Pono team, I, I got them all to listen to Skrillex on this, <laughs> and it sounds badass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, you can hear that thing twanging away in there, and yeah, I hear all of the the mechanical sounds of the you, instrument. Even his music sounds completely different on Pono. I'm hearing things I've never heard in it before. Well, it's a revolution in recorded sound, but it's not anything new. It's just the way it is. We, well, it, we got out of the way. It is new that uh, you can buy it for four hundred dollars. A thing that sounds like this would be thousands of dollars before this. There's no doubt about that. This is a play for music to bring music back to people so they get it. That's why there's nothing else on this player other than music. Why is the iPhone not as good as this? Why, it's it, a consumer product. Steve told me, this is a consumer product, Neil. I can't change the DAC in this product, and I can't, you know, these huge files and everything. I just can't do this. And I said, but consumer music used to be the best that it could be. Why did it go down? Why is music going down when images are going up? Why is audio dying while video is exploding on a quality level? It just doesn't make sense. But on the other hand, it's one of the greatest opportunities in the history of recorded sound. And that's what we're doing. That's why we have a business. Yeah. Harmon's been talking about this. I have a feeling you have shared uh, values between Harmon and and, and Pono. Harmon and, and Pono have, have shared vision. Make music better. Make it sound better. Make a music so you can hear it and feel it. And if you want to get inside your car, and Harmon's expert at building car stereos, and things like that, and and, uh, and we'll work with them to uh, design systems that get out of the way when a great signal comes in, and then work like hell to make a bad signal sound better. You know, it's just, it's all technology. We can do all of it. The thing is that we uh, we need to commit ourselves and buckle down and do the work. Thank you for spending a few minutes of your time with thank me. Thank you. And thanks for building a great product. I love it. Good. Thank you very much. I'm glad. I hope you, uh, you appreciate and have many happy hours listening to this thing. Uh, you know, on, on Facebook, I, I keep praising it, and there's always a few skeptics. What, what do you say to the skeptics to say, oh, this I isn't say, the best I think part. you guys are great. You skeptics out there, stick with your thing. Stick with it. But if you ever hear a Pono player, don't ignore it. Just pay attention to it. it may, you may change your mind. You may not. There's a lot of people in the world. We're not going to convert everybody all the time. There's no reason to. 
It's your choice. You'd want the really good one or do you want the other one? I want the really good one. I want the really good one too. But I want it as convenient as my iPhone. iPhone. <laughs> you could have it. You just put this in your pocket and control it with your iPhone. And listen to it through directly from this into that. If you get a phone call, I mean, the technology's there. Listen to your phone call through the Pono device. What's the problem? Bluetooth to your, you know, it's just a phone call. It doesn't have to sound like 100% great sound. So you Bluetooth it and ruin it. Put it in there. You can still identify who you're talking to. People have gotten used to the fact that if they can identify what it is they're listening to, it's good. That's not right. We're going to see Kiss here uh, t tomorrow night. Good, great. <laughs> are you going to be there? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know what my plans are. I hear these tickets are hard to get. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you could get one. <laughs>